just explain what's the really difference between the RNA and a DNA? And yeah, I think that's a very important uh, uh, issue to understand. So DNA is a physical object that's found in all of our cells, and it has a potential for a function. However, when a gene uh, needs to perform that function, it first has to be copied into RNA molecules. And so without RNA molecules, there's no life and there's no functions. And so our cells copy the gene into RNA, which is then translated into function. And that's what we actually see in our physiology. So just to be clear, DNA tells you everything that can happen. And it's just like an alphabet and RNA is actually what is happening. So if, you know, you, whether it's writing a poetry or a thriller, so our DNA is an alphabet and RNA is actually what is being done with that. Yeah, I like that metaphor. Okay, um, so as um, you look at this DNA and RNA, why is it important for us to look at RNA versus DNA, especially when it comes to chronic diseases? So let's, let's think of a chronic disease. For example, rheumatoid arthritis. Many people have that disease. Millions of people have that disease. Um, rheumatoid arthritis comes and goes, meaning that people will, will be in remission and will be essentially symptom-free for months or years. And then they'll have a relapse where they'll suffer very bad symptoms for months or years and no one really understands why that happens. And it goes through these cycles where cumulatively there's joint damage that accrues over a period of years. It's clear that there's very little genetics that plays a role in, this, in these changes going from remission to relapse. So it's all about gene expression. It's all about inflammatory response to some things, to some environmental stimulus that we don't yet understand. And, and, change, and that changes the disease. So it's really all about gene expression and not genetics. So why is it that everybody is really looking at DNA and they think somehow that looking at the DNA will give them some idea about why you are sick? And what I'm hearing from you is really that it's not like you suddenly you have a, a disease that's flaring up and you say, mom, my DNA changed. That's exactly right. So I think the main reason why almost everyone is studying DNA, it's because it's easier. DNA is a very stable molecule. If you leave it in a tube on the bench for two weeks, it's still gonna be there. RNA is a very unstable molecule. It is constantly produced and constantly degraded in cells, in living cells. And for that reason, it's a far more inform informative molecule. So I'll give you one example uh, in the microbiome space, in the gut microbiome space. We've all heard how the gut microbiome has millions of genes and how they outnumber our own genes by hundreds to one and so on. Of those millions of genes that are encoded by our gut microbiome, there are only a, very, a small fraction that are actually expressed and play a role in our physiology, meaning our health and disease. And it's really understanding those expressed genes, the expressed functions of the gut microbiome, that is important in our understanding what gut microbiome functions lead to health and disease.